Hello, welcome back to Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath Design. I'm Steve Cascione, your host for Flavors and Knowledge, my good friend, Chef Walter oh, yeah. Potenza. Yeah. We come to you from this beautiful designer kitchen showroom at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath, right on Jefferson Boulevard. And you're telling me, Chef, off camera, you love working in this kitchen. This is a beautiful setting. They have been designed properly. Okay. Now we're in the dead of winter, and we're also what I guess we could call the month of love for February. So maybe you can come up with something, putting the two together, some comfort food? Absolutely. All right, I, so uh, what'd you get up your sleeve? I'm part of an heritage where to us every day it's the day of love, yeah. as you <laughs> know, so are you. So. Yeah. But today we're going to uh, put together uh, a couple of dishes. First dish is a, a simple uh, dish. Uh, it's pasta. It's made with a, a type of a dry cut pasta called the schiaffone. Schiaffone meant big slaps. <laughs> if you translate, that's right, that's when you right. get slapped by yes. uh, by your mom, uh, and it's made with a bechamel. Bechamel, it's a sauce that it's a classic. It belongs to the classic of the four classic sauces. Uh, we're using flour as a thickener, and we're using butter. What's the origin of the bechamel? Bechamel actually started in Florence and then moved really? into France. Okay. And then the French categorized the sauces, and of course uh, they created the sauce. In a, in a dictionary format mm -hmm. called the La Russe Gastronomique. In Louisiana, they do something called the roux. In this yes. case, that's what we're going to make. Okay. R-O-U-X. Roux is a thickener. Uh, today, in today's kitchen, we cook much lighter, Stephen. So roux is not used as much as it did in the past. We use other thickeners. One that comes to mind is potato starch, which okay. is lighter and so on, cornstarch. Yeah. And you're gonna help me with this. Sure. We're gonna begin melting the butter, and we're gonna do butter and flour an equal amount. Okay. That's really how it works. Sounds okay. good. All right, so. How much butter are we putting in to start? Right now it's a tablespoon and a half. Okay. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a little bit more, okay. because we're making two dishes Sauces, so you're okay? using butter, why not olive oil? Works better with the butter? Butter is actually the classic recipe. Okay. Olive oil can be used, can be used even a vegetable oil mm -hmm. if you like. Mm -hmm. But the richness and the nuttiness of the butter cannot be substituted. Okay. So that we're going to bring this to a melting okay. and then we'll begin. And we're going to use, in this particular recipe, pumpkin puree. Ooh, I like uh, pumpkin. You may use a butternut squash at this time of the year. You cook them in salted boiling water. Then you, you puree them and you can use them as an additional flavor that to this. That sounds delicious. Chef, right, the butter so, looks like it's melting. Yeah, and there you go. All right. And I'm going to give you a whisk and we're going to do this with milk, okay? Sure. So just stir it gently. Let me lower the fire for yep. you. Yeah. Okay. It's now, in a class of day, we have to cook this even for about two to three minutes because what we're trying to do is actually cook the flour. If you have a flour that it's not fully cooked, Stephen, you will have a, a raw taste in your palate. Oh, really? Okay. How's that going? Beautiful. Beautiful. Just keep. And then we're going to add the whole milk. Okay. Now, in a classic recipe, in this particular stage, warm milk is advisable. But I'm going to eliminate one step. I'm not going to keep the milk warm so that you don't have another pan to wash. And okay. I'll show you why. It we looks good. Yeah, looks pretty good. Stir a little bit more. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you tilt it like that. See? Yeah, okay. And around the pan, it's turning. See the white? Yes. That white is giving you signals that the flour is getting cooked. Cooked. Okay? Okay. And if you put this near your nose, you will smell a nuttiness of the flour that is cooking. Yeah, you're okay? right. It has a different You move smell. it away from the pan. You add the milk. And now you stir quickly. Okay so that you eliminate the lumps. Good. Okay. I have already cooked these uh, schiaffoni a couple of minutes ago. Those are big. Yeah. <laughs> they, and so what we're gonna do with these, we're gonna make the sauce for them. And they are filling. Don't forget, every time you buy dry pasta, always opt for the highest quality. Wheat is usually milled in different category, A, B, C, D. And a pasta that is $1.50 a pound, doesn't have the same structure, the taste, or the texture as something that is five, six, seven dollars a pound. And I think your stomach is worth it anyways, right, Stephen? Yes. Look, not one lump. No, How's no. that? Lumpless. Huh? Excellent. We're gonna do a little nutmeg, Stephen, inside. Oh, okay? I love, I, all these flavors are my favorites. Good. I love nutmeg. Little nutmeg. Sometimes I put it in coffee. Excellent idea, or cinnamon. So that's gonna thicken a little bit for you, okay? So we have to wait a couple of minutes for that one. 
In the meantime, usually a little bit of salt on this, Stephen, okay. and white pepper, okay? White pepper because it's a white sauce. Right. And in a classic bechamel, what you don't want to see is the little pieces of black pepper, okay? Because that you will sense. not be able to get rid of them, okay? Right. That makes so, sense. It's getting a little thicker, I can it's see. It's thickening, yeah. We're going to do the pumpkin puree right now on the inside, okay? This is again purchased, store bought. And this is going to change the color of your sauce considerably. Oh, yeah. Look and it that. brings it from a white Look at that. to kind of an amber, you see? Yeah, it? beautiful. It's a dish that can be made in the winter because of its thickness. It's hearty, see? Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful. It's almost matching the color of the pan. Beautiful. We're going to do some gorgonzola, Stephen, here. Okay. You don't have to do this. You may use mascarpone. You can use a cream cheese, but I would opt for something really rich in butter fat. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now it's really getting thick. Beautiful. So it's getting thicker. And so you always want to have a little bit of a vegetable broth on the side while cooking. Okay. And this is neutral. And I'm going to do a little bit of this for you so that it can dilute a little bit. How's that? Looks nice. A little bit more. Good. I don't know, Chef. Looks like it might be done. And I'm going to do what you like right there. Ooh. You're going to just uh, fold them in and move them yep. away from the, the, the gas, from the fire. Yeah. Okay. Good. These are nice. Let me bring it eat? closer to you. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm hungry. Eat. You know me. <laughs> right. You have a dozen, all right? That sounds good. Let me use the spoon. I think that might work better. Yeah. And so we add this pasta. Wow, look at that. That has just been cooked up to the eight minutes, eight to nine minutes. Nice. And then he just folds it in. See? Beautiful. That looks good. Looks very nice. And this is practically done. There's not much to it. I get a taste. Yeah. I'm sure you love it. That's delicious. Like it? Mm. Good. So you position these little guys the way you like. These are also very, uh, uh, many times you use stuffed. You okay. stuff the schiaffone and then you stand it on a plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. What do you recommend to stuff them with? Well, you can do ricotta, all vegetables yeah. inside. You know, you can do meat, a nice sausage uh, nice. mixing. Will do very well. Yep. And the gorgonzola gives it a tangy, the, the tanginess that we look for and a pasta, because there is a little bit of sweetness here from the pumpkin puree. Yeah, okay? that's delicious. Yeah. See, it's a hearty dish. It is and a it's hearty a dish. dish. It's for now. And uh, again, it's a basic bechamel that you can make at home ahead of time. It stays in the refrigerator for a good three, four days. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's good to know. And then you maybe use it. And if it's too thick, you use a vegetable More broth to, bring it, yeah. to dilute it yep. a little bit. A good parmigiano reggiano over the top. Look at that. And then we do some of these uh, sunflower seeds, Stephen, to stay in tune with the winter. Look at that, pretty. Yeah. Nice job, Chef. And then we'll finish it off, as always, Stephen, with raw olive oil over the top. Just a couple of little, uh, drops, like that. We give it a shine, and it gives the plate a little elegance and a richness that it deserves. And so we call these schiaffoni. Uh, wait the, a minute, let's call them Steve's schiaffoni. All right. Just don't give me a schiaffoni. <laughs> I got plenty of those when I was younger. They are with gorgonzola, pumpkin puree, sunflower seeds, and parmigiano reggiano. Okay, now we're gonna pause and uh, we're gonna go to Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath. They've got some great new ideas coming up. And we'll be back in just a little bit. The chef is going to make a dessert. Welcome to the R.I. Kitchen and Bath Seminar Series, where you can learn the ins and outs of kitchen and bath remodeling and design from the experts themselves. Get inspired by seeing the latest products and designs in our beautiful showroom floor. So today's topics, we're going to go over kitchen and bath design trends. Um, just a few things that we're going to touch on. Today's topics are going to include uh, levels of remodeling, budgeting, and then 10 steps to a successful remodel.
I'm Joni. And Dave from Bristol, Rhode Island. And we've come here to uh, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath uh, seminar because we are starting a planning for redoing our kitchen and half bath laundry room. This is our second visit that we've done here and we really enjoy it very much. And we're definitely going to use Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath because they take care of everything. It's important to have somebody you know, working with you in this time to really help guide you through all of those decisions there are to make. Sometimes people are a little overwhelmed by how many decisions there really are. Uh, attention was paid to every detail. Um, it was a very thorough inspection before the project even started so that the company was already aware of any problems that already existed that had to be addressed and they were also able to alert us, my husband and myself, to any problems that also might occur. Say you plan your whole space, you go to put the toilet in, the building inspector comes out and you haven't left 15 inches from the wall to the center of your toilet and everything else is so tight that nothing else can move, that's not going to pass. So it's really important that you're measuring and taking into account all those different codes and stipulations. You know, we are a very well-established company. We've been in business for 29 years. Um, we have kitchen and bath remodeling down to a science, so we're very experienced in terms of uh, code requirements and safety regulations that need to be followed. We also have, you know, an award-winning team of designers here. You know, we really offer people a lot of expertise and peace of mind in, you know, getting these projects done. Visit RIKB.com for a list of the upcoming seminars and to reserve a seat for the next event. Or come to our showroom floor located on Jefferson Boulevard in Warwick. For over 37 years, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli in Cranston has been your neighborhood market. Garden Hills offers the highest quality choice certified Angus beef, the freshest produce, and delicious sandwiches served in the old world traditions. Pick up some choice tenderloin cuts for that unforgettable romantic dinner. All our meats are prepared to order. We can cater any event, pick up, or we'll deliver to you. Since 1981, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli has been a trip to Italy for your senses. The innovative Go Rehab program at Bannister Center is revolutionizing rehab in Rhode Island. Featuring advanced rehab technology and on-site physicians, the Go Rehab program gets residents back home quicker and stronger. Healthier eating and cutting-edge treatments help get Go residents home faster than conventional programs. Perks like smart TVs and Netflix are great too. If you need rehab after injury or surgery, I recommend Bannister Center. Go there, get stronger. Welcome back to Flavors and Knowledge. I'm Steve Cascione along with our chef, Walter Potenta. We're at the beautiful Rhode Island Kitchen Bath Design Showcase yep. on Jefferson Boulevard. And boy, their facilities are amazing, huh? It's feel at home a, here. It's always a pleasure to work here. It's impeccably clean. Yeah. And they have a lot of events here. So That's good. We have a visiting chef series. I personally have a workshop program nice. with them. That's great. Second dish of the show, I want to treat you a little dessert. Ah, Simple, now you're something you can make at home relatively fast, especially with children around. If you want to praise them for getting straight A's, like I do with my grandkids, this uh -huh. is what they get. What we nice start grandpa. with whole milk. Okay, Stephen? Yeah. A couple of cups of whole milk here. I used to get this when I was a kid. Really? Well, you know, growing up right after the Second World War, uh, money was always tight, so my mom was very uh, inventive, you know, in uh, coming up with nice. ingredients. We have cocoa okay. and sugar combined together in this bowl. Right. This is a cup each. Then I have a flour. I have uh, a little bit of sugar that we're going to figure out if we need it or not. I don't think we need it. I have that? a hazelnut spread here. Yeah. Uh, you have probably heard of the one called Nutella, which right, right, you yep. know has been uh, in Italy for about ninety some years. Really, made with the ground hazelnut and so on. We're going to do this all on cold, okay? Okay, all on cold. Sure. So I had all the ingredients: flour, sugar, and cocoa. That goes right in. Right in. This takes no effort. Now the idea, Stephen, is to break those lumps. Go ahead. Okay. Have a I'll good take time. Care of that for you, Since you did that yeah. with a whisk and a first. And half I was of good the with show, the bechamel. Very huh? good. Yeah, I figured so, that. At least figure, I'm good for something. Figure you on the job. And then we'll use it in this little terrine. Once this terrine is completed, you can refrigerate it. 
cover it with uh, plastic wrapping and keep it in the refrigerator until later for use. I don't suggest eating this pudding warm, so you would have to chill it all the time. Yeah, it's okay. always good chill pudding, huh? Yeah. Be careful, don't get it on yourself. No, really. no. Beautiful. I have the Old Spice and cinnamon here, and Steven is gonna blend it together. That smells good. Yeah. Now, at this stage, Stephen, we could drop inside the chocolate chips. We could put 100% uh, unsweetened bacon chocolate, which yeah. that will do very well. Yep, yep. Uh, I wouldn't suggest milk chocolate. Okay. okay so I Why not no chocolate? Not well, good. because what we have already is sugar inside. So yeah. we want something that doesn't have uh, as much sugar. We want something that's strong on cocoa. 80, 90% chocolate bar. Yeah. You can yeah. throw it inside, okay? So. And, uh, and then we're going to have this baby here, which you can find anywhere you like, okay? That's Any place good. in your favorite store, you can find the hazelnut spread, okay? And... Uh, oh, it smells so good. Mm. Yeah, and it's going to take in a couple of seconds. Okay, as soon as the milk gets warm, it will take in. There you go. Try to get I got most of the lumps. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Try to get most of this out. Uh, yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, it's part of the technical process. Every time you do cook and you do it from scratch, you have to move your hands somehow, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. I'm sure you had something like that when you were younger. Oh, yeah. My mother used to make pudding a lot. Forget Not chocolate. the instant pudding, but they used to make it from scratch, just like you. Chocolate, uh, chocolate is a product that is for throughout the year. Obviously, in the month of February, we celebrate Valentine with chocolate, and hundreds and hundreds of recipes are created to uh, glorify. Right. The, and it's good uh, for you. A little bit absolutely. of chocolate is good for you, right? Especially dark chocolate mm. is very good for, uh, uh, according to some of the research, Right. Low pressures and other things. Right. Heart right. healthy. That's the word. Heart healthy. Right. So this is going to thicken because the flour and the cocoa combined right. create uh, the thickening that we're looking for. So we're going to a boiling if it right tastes, now. Yeah, as good as it smells, it's a winner. So this is going to take a few more seconds. Nice. Okay. And try it for now. See what do you think. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah, it's got a That's nice little so taste. Good. Oh, it's different than regular chocolate pudding. Well, the the allspice and the cinnamon and ties, mm. uh, times of uh, winter, you know, oh, so it gives delicious. you that kind of a uh, flavor delicious. profile that you're looking for. And uh, so, Stephen, this is going to take in a few more minutes. We're going to have to wait. We're going to talk about wines, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Excellent. Stay tuned. The soil content and the weather plays a big role in the grapes. Terroir is always very important in winemaking. It's basically all of your factors. The wind, your water, what kind of weather you normally have. Um, they all play important roles in how the grapes are going to grow. You recommend room temperature? Do we recommend it being a little on the cool side? I know red wines is a little tough to decide. Depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I do have mine chilled down a little bit around you know, you can be around 55, 58 degrees, okay. and it's totally fine, but you can go up to room temperature. It's going to play into the aromatics. Okay. Now, when people come in, and I was reading about this, you may see on some of the labels, DOC or DOCG. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? It's a, a, an easy way to recognize quality, to recognize that the wine is from a specific place. Okay. DOC, DOCG, IGT, they're all different levels. Mm -hmm. Most Super Tuscans that you find are going to be IGTs. Yes. So it's basically wines of a specific area, but that area is very wide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, DOC is wines that are f guaranteed to be from a much smaller area, and the majority will be coming from a, a specific vineyard. Right. And your DOCG is an even smaller circle. So those are the better. And you know, I often uh, talk about some people, what they do before they serve the wine is they open it mm -hmm. and then they let it breathe. Is sure. that something you should always do or does it depend on the wine? Well, 
you know, they let it breathe for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and sometimes people will decant it as well. Absolutely. If it's a champagne, no, don't do that. Oh, no, you but don't want to do that, right. <laughs> if you're going to have a nice uh, full red, it never hurts to decant. For the most part, if you pour heavily into the glass, it's fun to make a presentation out of the bottle and pour gently. Mm -hmm. um, it's elegant. But what it doesn't do is allow for oxygen to come in contact with the wine. Okay. Normally, when you have a bottle, you kind of want to pour a little heavy. The wine will dance in the glass. Right. It gets more oxygen, right. then it's going to open up fuller, swirl judiciously, mm -hmm. and you're going to have the same effect as a decanter without having to drink all of that wine in the next couple of hours. Okay. So what's the difference from champagne to Prosecco? The grapes? Mm -hmm. So only Glera is for Prosecco, where champagne can be Chardonnay, Pinot Meunet, or Pinot Noir. True Champagne, for the most part, can only come from the Champagne region, right. with the exception of a couple of vineyards in California that are actually grandfathered in. So with Champagnes, you get that fine pearl, tiny pearl-like bubble, right. and that is due to that second stage fermentation. And those are more expensive. They are. Great advice. Thank you. Hello, I'm at Bannister Center right here in Providence and with me I have some of the guests here, some of my patients and some of the people who make it happen. The idea is to share with you health and wellness through food as part of a rehabilitation program that this center offers. And right now I'm going to proceed in preparing a quick Tuscan bean salad. It's very simple. Every one of you can do this, but most of all, they can do this at home once they are out of here and returning to their home life. Some of the ingredients here, the first thing that you want to make is a quick vinaigrette. I have a cider vinegar. I'm going to use as an oil a seed oil or a nut oil or an extra virgin. In this case, I chose hazelnut oil. And whisking is fundamental. On the bottom of the bowl, I've already added salt and black pepper. I do a quick whisking, and then we add the ingredients. A little tomato, a few peppers. All of these ingredients, by the way, have their own minerals and ingredients that are good for us. If you work with nature, nature gives you all the ingredients that are necessary to live a healthy and great life. Some cucumbers. We had the beans, and we're gonna give it a quick stir. Typically, this particular mix, it's left to be rested for about 30 minutes. And we're gonna have a salad here that I've cut already in a julienne form, and we'll give it a quick toss. It's a great addition to a lunch, next to a couple of pieces of carbs. And this completes the Tuscan bean salad with the addition of a tomato, cucumbers, red onion, and a chiffonade, radicchio, or romaine lettuce of choice. And there we go. And that's from the Bannister Center kitchen. This is Chef Walter. And welcome back. Chef is laboring here with our uh, pudding. Good. We oh, it smells ready. unbelievable, Chef. A little bit of... Uh, a little bit of an unsalted body to it, okay. so that what it does, it doesn't uh, allow the, the the create the film over the top because the flour, uh, when it solidifies, yep. it creates a film on the top uh, of yeah. the, the right, right, almost the like yep. a sauce. The yeah, bottom yeah, will prevent yeah. from doing that. That's a good so trick. So as soon as done, you go into a pot. You don't need to put any butter on a pot or whatever you're serving. Oh, look at that. Mm mm mm. That looks amazing. Yep. Wow. And you get to clean the I pan. I was going to lick oh, the pan. <laughs> and usually, this is how we do them, okay? A little biscotti? Yeah, these uh, get soft, they crumble, they break inside. Oh, look at that, how oh, nice. And of course, this gets chilled for about 25 to 30 minutes, and then brought to a table and served, okay? Beautiful. And this is your chocolate pudding with uh, allspice, cinnamon, right? and uh, whatever else we use. Love. Love, Chef. That's what it's all about. Good job. There we go. We were looking for a company. We wanted a place that 
was had a great reputation, which um, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath definitely does, and also where we could have everything done in one place. So they gave us a schedule at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath showing exactly who would be at our house and exactly what would be done, and it was a daily schedule. At the end of the process, kitchen was completed earlier than uh, anticipated. We just got such a good feeling about this place. You know, they welcomed you in, they had professionals working here, and these people were design experts. That's what I felt, and uh, their ideas just clicked with what we were looking for, and we didn't even know it. Absolutely. I would agree with that 100%. These designers were moving us more into a lifestyle that we know we're going to live into and retire in. Um, I just can guarantee that if you or anyone else decides to use Round Kitchen and Bath, they'll be thrilled with the work and they'll know the price beforehand, they'll know what's going in beforehand and what they plan for is what they'll get. But we, we had known about the fact that they were a design build firm and did things from soup to nuts as Rebecca said, mm -hmm. but if I have to answer the question as to what surprised us about it, um, the, the company, I think it was just how exceptional they are at all elements of what they do. Um, everything from the design consultation to pushing and prodding us in the right direction to help us make decisions about things to the pre-construction work and all the way through the construction. I've been continually amazed at how good they are at every phase of that. For over 37 years, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli in Cranston has been your neighborhood market. Garden Hills offers the highest quality choice certified Angus beef, the freshest produce and delicious sandwiches served in the old world tradition. Pick up some choice tenderloin cuts for that unforgettable romantic dinner. All our meats are prepared to order. We can cater any event, pick up, or we'll deliver to you. Since 1981, Garden Hills Fruit and Deli has been a trip to Italy for your senses. At Bannister Center in Providence, our mission is to provide innovative rehab and dedicated skilled nursing services in a comfortable, dignified environment. Our caring and compassionate staff is dedicated to engaging patients in a healthy lifestyle that leads to faster, more effective rehab. We have set a new standard of excellence to meet the physical, social, and spiritual needs of each resident. If you need rehab after injury or surgery, I recommend Bannister Center. Go there, get stronger. And so, we are done with uh, two recipes. Chef, well, let's did, yeah. Yeah, briefly recap, we made the schiaffone. Schiaffone. Big slap. Yep, a big slap. Pumpkin, pumpkin gorgonzola and bechamel with the sunflower seeds. And we'll call this your pudding, right? Oh, like your mom's, your mom's pudding, a, right? Yeah. This is something that I grew up with and I think it's a good idea for you to try. And uh, it's brought me back a lot of good memories of my mom and my childhood in Italy. And I think it's so simple that it can be done uh, every time you have a children, especially when you want to praise them or something. Well, Buy one of these. Ones, right? Everybody has cocoa yeah. at home. Impress everybody. So. Good I'll job. I'll see you the next time. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much.